Welcome to the public report out for the Contra Costa County Community Crisis Initiative. Thank you for joining us. For the past number of months, Contra Costa Health Services has been working in partnership with communities across the county to review existing behavioral health crisis response services and develop a future vision for how to best connect residents with the most appropriate resources where and when they need them. City leaders, community stakeholders, service providers, and staff participated in a multi-day workshop where they reviewed data, observed real-life responses, and identified areas for improvement. Today, the team will present the key findings and recommendations from this process. You will hear from two of the program sponsors, as well as from the team that worked diligently over the past two weeks to complete this project. First, we'll hear from Dan Buckshy, who's the city manager in Walnut Creek. Then we have a video the team prepared that describes how the process worked, shares some quotes and testimonials, and describes a little bit about next steps. That video is about 40 minutes long. Anna Roth, Health Director for Contra Costa Health Services, will finish our presentation today. I'll turn it over to Dan. All right, thank you, Kim, and good morning and welcome. I'm Dan Buckshy, City Manager of Walnut Creek, and I want to thank everybody for joining us today, including many community members, elected officials, city representatives, and staff members from multiple agencies. On behalf of the 19 cities of Contra Costa County, I'm grateful to be with all of you today to discuss the incredible and collaborative work that has occurred over the past two weeks, which you're going to hear much more about in a few moments. I wanna thank everyone for their hard work and dedication as this effort was a big lift. I applaud everyone who has participated, including individuals who have, who have experienced mental illness, over 45 different organizations, 19 cities, and dozens of people from the county. In addition, this has been both a trying and at times a very emotional experience as we've been discussing a very serious and difficult issue. And that issue is mental, mental illness and how people with mental illness are treated by society. The process that we've gone through requires a considerable amount of trust because in order to be effective, we all needed to be vulnerable and share our weaknesses and shortcomings so we can improve. And as you'll see, I believe we did just that. You know, one of the many goals of this effort is to be inclusive and to incorporate as many perspectives as possible in order to have a full 360 degree view of our current state of affairs as they relate to mental, mental health issues. It's clear that it is very clear that there is widespread support for this endeavor. This effort was born out of tragedy and a community's effort to effect positive change. This, this process was initiated almost a year ago, but unfortunately was sidelined because of the pandemic. And it's nice to see that we are back on track. Additionally, and lastly, in the recent election, over 58% of Contra Costa voters supported the Measure X sales tax, which is used to be used to help pay for health services. As such, this new program is on very strong footing as there is both community and monetary support to make this happen. Thank you for, again for being here today, and I look forward to seeing all of you at our next update. My name is Cynthia Osterholt James, and I am a peer support provider and a person with lived experience, both personal and family. Um, being asked to be a part of the Valley Stream mapping was, a, was scary to me at first. I had no idea what I was getting into, but the knowledge that I've gained from Value Stream mapping is, um, is priceless. And I hope I could be a part of the future Value Stream mapping. Thank you. I'm Erica Jensen, Deputy Health Services Director from Contra Costa Health Services. And welcome to our value stream mapping report out from our community crisis initiative. We are dedicating this report out to Miles Hall and to all in our county who have or are living currently with behavioral health needs. We know that one in five adults in Contra Costa County live with behavioral health needs and this affects not only them, but their loved ones and our whole community. We also know that we have lost individuals in our county who have died by suicide. I'm Sergeant Rob Ransom, 
with the San Ramon Police Department. Our goal in serving the Contra Costa community is to be all encom encompassing and all inclusive. And so our guiding principles of this group are to reach anyone, anywhere, and anytime. Hello, my name is Amanda Dold and I work for the Behavioral Health Services Division. For this event, we assembled a team of more than 45 people from across our county. Our team included people from our community with lived experience as well as family members. Our team also included County Behavioral Health Services, the Office for Consumer Empowerment, our existing mobile crisis teams, law enforcement, including mental health evaluation team, county emergency medical services, American medical response, core homeless outreach, friends of Scott, Alexis, and Ton Hall, John Muir, Contra Costa Fire, our schools, and the community-based organizations such as 211, NAMI, Hume Center, and Hope Solutions. Hello, my name is Chad Pierce with Contra Costa County Children's Behavioral Health. As part of this process, we divided our team into three subgroups or sub teams with team leads. We had a pre-crisis team, a calling for help team, and a crisis response and post-crisis team. All teams included individuals with lived experience. We wanted to clearly understand the experience of a crisis and crisis response from the point of view of the individual experiencing the crisis. Hello everyone, my name is Matt Kaufman, Director of the Hazardous Materials Division for Contra Costa Health Services. One of the first things we did as an improvement team was develop our AIM statement. So what is an AIM statement? The AIM statement should answer the very important question, what are we trying to accomplish through this improvement work? The AIM statement should be clear, time specific and measurable. Hi, Fire Captain Paul Berganza with Contra Costa County Fire Rescue and EMS. So after our in-depth team discussions and input from our project sponsors and leadership, here is our AIM statement. Anyone in Contra Costa County can access timely and appropriate behavioral health crisis services anywhere, anytime. I'm Gigi Crowder and I'm the Executive Director of the National Alliance of Mental Illness here in Contra Costa County. What does appropriate mean? For our work, it's a vision of persons as a human being who can recover. We wanna treat everyone with respect and dignity. We wanna be free of implicit and racial bias and approach our work from a multicultural lens with language interpretation available. Hi, my name is Jesse Ferrar, Substance Abuse Counselor with Contra Costa County. What does appropriate mean? When dealing with men and women who are dealing with mental health substance abuse issues, it's very important that we treat them with respect and the dignity that they deserve. Thank you. We want to make sure that there is peer and family support as well. Hello, my name is Noelia Gutierrez. I'm an Administrative Services Assistant with Contra Costa County. And a value stream map is a visual representation of a process from beginning to end. It tracks all pathways from the time someone calls for help to the time they reach the door of a facility. It shows all the process wait times to better understand the flow, cycle times, and communication pathways. The map looks at the process from another person's perspective or with fresh eyes. It shows the value of the service provided at the right time, and it shows whether we are meeting or exceeding expectations. Hi, this is uh, Matt White with Contra Costa Health Services. And one of the things we did was uh, observe um, using a time observation sheet. And here's an example of that here. Um, and a stopwatch, this is not the actual stopwatch used, never seen an analog stopwatch. But the intent is, is to record the detailed steps in time uh, involved. And you'll hear later, as we learned in the middle of a crisis, uh, all time is not equal. Hello, my name is David Seidner. I'm the program chief for Detention Mental Health. And through a series of interviews and observations, we gathered information about the processes. It's important that our eyes are wide open, our ears are open, and our mouths are small. 
uh, we want to uh, focus our attention on active listening and hear uh, from the individuals who are experiencing the crisis and doing the work. Hello, my name is James Lancaster. I'm the uh, clinician with the mental health evaluation team with Contra Costa County. Um, during our value streaming mapping for uh, crisis um, interventions, uh, we had observations uh, and interviews um, at multiple locations throughout Contra Costa County to get a better um, overall uh, view of what exactly is going on within our county. Hello, my name is Anna Lubarov. I'm a person with lived experience. I am also a peer support specialist and a mental health advocate. Pre-crisis is the moment when we have a chance to help someone to avoid a much bigger problem or even a tragedy and a heartbreak for the family. If we provide timely, recovery-centered and trauma-informed voluntary services, we may be able to prevent a 5150 and hospitalization. Intervening before a crisis is the best alternative for everyone involved. A person will not have to be subjected to unnecessary trauma and the system will have savings because the person did not use the highest and most expensive level of care. Thank you. Hello, my name is Casey Coble from Contra Costa County Transition Team. Housing resources are very limited in Contra Costa County and due to COVID-19 shelters have been closed. Contra Costa County is currently serving over 600 individuals at six hotel locations. One of the six hotels are currently being used as person under investigation or what we call PUI for COVID-19 screening and for people who are positive with COVID-19. Motel 6 in Pittsburgh is currently serving over 200 individuals who have been re referred due to a mental health condition or, and or medical needs or a combination of both. Due to COVID-19, some individuals are feeling isolated as part of pre-crisis, we would like to see more of a connection with therapists, behavioral health staff, and peer providers in order to provide support for all people in need of services. Resources like the Health, Housing, and Homeless Program, or H3, includes the CORE team, Coordinated Outreach Referral Engagement Program. CORE members meet individuals at their location, they assess their housing and service needs, in addition to connecting them to shelters. Their biggest challenge is when clients require a higher level of services as in the event of a crisis. Hi, my name is Su Jung Han. I'm working for a mobile crisis response team as a clinician. I visited the Miller Wellness Center and the Central County Adult Mental Health Clinic. I believe that those outpatient behavior health clinics took a critical role to alleviate clients' risk of relapse and unnecessary hospitalization by taking care of clients' immediate needs in a professional and timely manner. Hello, I'm Rachel Echelmeyer, a corporal at the San Ramon Police Department. Members of our team went to both John Muir Behavioral Health and the Discovery Center and spoke with and observed at both facilities. Both of these facilities are not a crisis center. John Muir Behavioral Health offers both inpatient and outpatient treatment programs for children, adolescents, and adults who are having psychiatric or behavioral problems. The members of our team went and observed the call center where they receive approximately two to five calls a day. Once the person is determined that they are not in a crisis and what resources they will need, they are referred to the appropriate doctor, therapist, or resource. The Discovery Center is a community-based nonprofit organization serving the San Ramon Valley for over 50 years. They have both licensed and pre-licensed therapists working to assist people age four and up. Individuals will contact them via the telephone and they will get paired with a counselor or therapist in typically in a seven to 10 day period. Hi, my name is Scott Miller and I'm a mental health clinical specialist at the Miller Wellness Center in Martinez. Uh, two of the places that we were able to observe uh, on our team were the mental health, the behavioral health access line and 211. The, Behavioral health access line is a number which individuals can call in order to access mental health services available 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, assessment is completed by a clinician who can then support an individual in linking to appropriate mental health services, which may include network provider therapists, substance abuse treatment, same day walk-in mental health clinic at Miller Wellness Center, as well as one of three behavioral health clinics within the county. Uh, clin Clinicians complete assessments 
And based on their assessment, they may also provide support and linking to emergency community-based services in case of a mental health crisis. And 211, 211 is a number that anyone can call or text 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. 211 provides support and counseling for individuals who are feeling suicidal or experiencing a mental health crisis. They also provide services such as adult and child grief counseling due to loss of a loved one and provide referrals to other mental health resources. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley Lindblom and I'm a Lieutenant at the San Pablo Police Department. The Calling for Help team included professionals from many different parts of our county system of care, advocacy groups, and people with lived experience. We focused on the point in time an individual or family member in crisis makes the decision to call for help. We looked at their immediate options to include the 911 system and other non-law enforcement options. Some of the observations and questions we asked were what they experienced, importantly, barriers to care they encountered throughout the system, and finally, their overall view of how they and their family received care and ultimately their thoughts on improvement. Hi, I'm Judy Quitman. I'm a clinician at West County Adult Behavioral Health. I was on the Calling for Help team where I did observations with families, consumers, and, and police. I was honored by the willingness of the people and the organizations who participated in this process. In this slide, you see a list of the police departments, Pittsburgh Police Department, Concord Police Department, San Pablo Police Department, San Ramon Police Department and the Sheriff's Department, who opened their doors to us and allowed us to observe how they respond to crises. We want to thank them for their cooperation in this process. I personally learned what they mean when they say a police response when referring to a behavioral health crisis and how different a police response is from the way I as a clinician would approach many of the situations that law enforcement are called to. I also heard the police officers express their frustrations about the limited resources available to them other than psych emergencies services, especially after hours. Uh, my name is Betsy Orm and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the program manager for the adult behavioral health transition team. Um, I wanted to add to what Judy just said about the uh, law enforcement observations. I was also on the calling for help team and I was fortunate enough to be able to observe several law enforcement crisis intervention recordings. Um, I really appreciated having the opportunity to view these interactions from a law enforcement perspective. Um, one of the things I did notice was that the tone and demeanor of the officers who responded made a big difference in the result of the crisis response. And it just shows how important specialized training is in um, is needed for law enforcement when responding to those having a mental health crisis. Um, but I do a, really appreciate the law enforcement um, collaborating with us on this project. It was a really huge uh, contribution. Thank you. Hello, I'm Peter Benson, a local ER doctor and fire department medical director, and it is an honor to share my VSM workshop experiences with you. As an ER physician and fire department medical director in this county, a visit to the Contra Costa County ER was a natural choice. It was clear to me that CCRMC staff is very dedicated and highly committed to caring for their diverse and underserved population. My second encounter was in PES. I arrived at the same time that staff was doing an intake on a new patient at the back door and I was able to observe the intake process. Throughput and offload times at the PES facility have traditionally faced challenges and been significantly longer than most of the other ERs in the county. This experience clearly underscored the importance of this VSM, our goal of getting the right care to the right patient at the right time and will allow for flexibility and most importantly, improve the care to this most vulnerable population. The final visit was to the Contra Costa Regional Fire Communication Center. This center handles over 160,000 calls per year of which 70,000 or so are EMS calls. And those include a number of calls uh, up to 20 to 25 a day of those with mental health emergencies. 
as we work to better align EMS, public health, mental health, law enforcement, and other resources, I'm optimistic that we can make dramatic improvements in the experience of our mental health consumers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jen Blanza with Seneca's mobile response team, which supports youth and families experiencing a crisis. Our team was tasked with looking at the mobile response team's post-crisis supports, and we also had several interviews with family members and people with lived experience that was really impactful to our team and process. A quote we wanted to share is, I needed peer support on discharge. This would have prevented so many hospitalizations. I was feeling like such a freak. Hi, I'm Jenny Vargas, principal of Sunrise Social Emotional Educational Collaborative in the Mount Diablo Unified School District representing the Contra Costa County Office of Education. The mobile response team provides families of youth ages five through 22 in serious distress with immediate crisis intervention and mental health services. Using a two clinician model, they travel to wherever the youth and family may be in the community in order to intervene at the height of the crisis. They assess the immediate safety needs of the family, stabilize the youth in crisis and provide assistance and support to the caregivers. They also link families to community resources and longer term mental health services if needed. In 2019, MRT received 895 calls with 312 resulting in an in-person support with a majority of visits stabilized in the home or community. Hello, my name is Sanai Kidani and I'm the medical director for Contra Costa County EMS. I had the good fortune of, of shadowing the mobile crisis response team, um, or commonly known as the MCRT, which offers same day adult crisis intervention with the goal of preventing a full blown psychiatric emergency that obviates the need to call 911. Calls for service are referral based with most coming from outpatient and community providers as well as family members. There are currently three teams daily that provide service between the hours of 8 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, and a limited one person, one team, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. The team is comprised of a licensed mental health clinician who has the ability to write a 5150 and a peer who can offer support through their lived experience. In 2019, MCRT received 1,609 calls for service that resulted in approximately 1,277 field responses. Although MCRT is able to provide on-scene interventions that allow some patients to avoid a transport to psychiatric emergency, the majority of MCRT responses result in a 5150 that requires transport to the hospital for further evaluation and stabilization. Currently, team responses include the presence of law enforcement on nearly all responses. Police provide security and assist in enforcement should a client be placed on a 5150 involuntarily, as well as arrange for EMS ambulance transport in these situations. Due to limitations and availability, teams often wait on scene for police to arrive before making contact with the client. And lastly, the team's primary funding source is Medi-Cal reimbursement. And although they accept calls and respond to anyone in crisis throughout our county, this reality limits who can access the full breadth of their services. Hello, my name is Andrew Cooper and I'm a clinician here at um, West County Children and Adolescent Services. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting with um, individuals of the MET team, which stands for Mental Health Evaluation Team. And this team is a post-crisis assistance uh, as team com comprised of police officers and mental health clinicians. Um, it's based throughout our Contra Costa region, East, West, and Central County. Um, um, I had also had a pleasure of talking with a family member with lived experience who expressed her gratitude for the attention that she received from both the mental health counselors and also from the police officer. Um, I'm happy to say that she um, is currently still using the services and is happy and pleased with it. Thank you. Greetings, I am James Davis. I am an officer with the mental health evaluation team. Several of our team members had the uh, wonderful pleasure of visiting with the transition team, the county's transition team. What the transition team does is they do post discharge support from an inpatient psychiatric hospital and it could be Medi-Cal or uninsured. And their goal is to link long-term services and address immediate needs. 
They also provide assistance with things like getting your license, medical insurance, social security, medications, and also housing navigation. Several of our team members also had the pleasure of speaking with uh, houses and individuals that work with alcohol and other drug treatment programs. Those would include the Discovery House, Wallam House, and also the Nevin House. Good day. Hi, my name is Cynthia Osterl James. I am a peer support provider with both um, personal and family lived experience. The team had an opportunity to listen to a group of family members with lived experience. The team also interviewed individuals, including teens, adults, and family members with lived experience. These are some quotes that came from the interviews. The system protects itself, leaving the person in crisis and the family vulnerable. What ultimately saved me was peer support, my cat, and lots of laughter. I needed to watch my child get sicker before I could get care. Hello everyone, I'm Tom Tamura from the Contra Costa Crisis Center and 211. I and several others on our team had the honor and privilege to interview and listen to folks who are willing to share their lived experiences uh, accessing many of the services we are talking about today. We've included here some of their impressions along with pictures of some of them. Long ago, I learned a gem from a group of family partners that I've never forgotten. They told me nothing about us without us. Thank you to all that were willing to tell your stories to help our community. Hi, I'm Marty Beggs Casson, the police manager at Walnut Creek Police Department. Um, we had the privilege to develop a current state map. A current state map is basically a snapshot of how a process is done. And it also shows how we're performing in the delivery of services to our community at this current time and place. We identified steps in the process. We use sticky notes that you can see to identify specific states and decision points. The, this shows the journey of a person experiencing a crisis in our community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kenesha Johnson, Mental Health Program Manager at Central County Adult Behavioral Health at Contra Costa County. This is a picture of our current state map from beginning to end. The team has put all of their steps from their observations on the yellow sticky post-it notes, which resulted in a very complex map, as you can see. And the map is a visualization of what one person goes through from the beginning of calling for help through the end of our map, which um, connected clients to long-term service providers. And the blue sticky notes in the map a representation of the problems that were identified by the team members. Hi, I'm Sandy Young, Manager of Admissions and Social Services at John Muir Behavioral Health Center. As you can see, the teams identified many areas considered to be waste or non-value added for someone in crisis. Common themes we identified include crisis services not being offered 24 seven, agencies being unaware of other agencies work, people having to repeat their stories over and over, due to all the different stops they have to make on their way to stabilizing their crisis and people waiting for mobile crisis help to arrive. Think Highway 4 to Discovery Bay on a Friday at 4. Hi, I'm Joanna Young, Pre-Hospital Care Coordinator for Contra Costa County Emergency Medical Services Agency. Our team met in collaboration with the Business Intelligence Team at Health Services and collected data from law enforcement agencies, emergency medical services agencies, and psychiatric emergency services department. The following are examples of the types of data that our team analyzed, which includes total numbers of individuals placed on involuntary psychiatric holds, stratified by age, race, and population density. In contrast to county, about 13% of all emergency medical services calls address mental health issues, and there are between 10 and 11,000 involuntary psychiatric holds in the county each year. One of the most impactful data results, which validated our team's perceptions, is that there is a true racial disparity amongst African Americans. The data shows that African American communities are more likely to be placed on involuntary psychiatric holds compared to the overall population. A future goal is to develop a data dashboard to measure over time as we continue to work on system improvement. Hi, I'm Chaplain Creek Moore with the East Bay Chaplains of Northern California, and I'm a Contra Costa County Certified Peer Support Specialist. We're here and we took the large process map 
we turned it into a traditional value stream map. The purpose of this is to measure the value and simplified to show the time calculations. The reasons for the measure is to be able to see how the process changes over time as we get closer to the improved state. The improved state meaning how we improve the state of how we do things. The next few slides will show the time measurements. My name is John Gallagher. I'm a case manager at Hope Solutions. As the Reverend was, Reverend Creepmore was saying, this point now we're talking about analyzing the discrete amounts of times that are involved in different steps of delivering the care or the needed help to the person who's raising their hand for it. A um, couple terms, cycle time is the measurement of a discrete step in that process. Lead time means essentially from when the person raises their hand for help till when that help is actually provided. Important concept here too is value added versus non-value added. As you'll see in this slide that um, an important part here is the balance between in any process or the overall process, the balance between the value added time and non-value added time from the perspective of the person in need. As you can see in this example here that's called out with a 911 call uh, from a 911 call being made to uh, a person in need arriving uh, with psychiatric emergency services care, the amount of value added time was only about 13% of the overall time involved in that. Hello, my name is Harpa Kelly, nurse practitioner with Healthcare for the Homeless. Um, to frame our discussions on reimagining current Contra Costa County mental health crisis response process, we interviewed uh, Stephanie Lewis, uh, LMFT Division Director with Crisis Services, Alameda County Behavior Health Care Services, to learn about their mental health crisis response program. Um, we learned that efforts to reimagine mental health crisis response to uh, decenter law enforcement has been in practice since 1988 in Alameda County, and the current program involves a pilot uh, program that has mental health clinicians go out with emergency medical services, uh, EMS, uh, for mental health crisis response. The main takeaway that our group um, took away from this interview could be uh, summarized with a quote from Stephanie, uh, who says, the person most at risk in the room is the person experiencing the crisis because they don't have other options. We also uh, reviewed the National Guidelines for Behavioral Health Crisis Best Care Practice Toolkit from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration, or SAMHSA for short, and COPS clinicians are both collaborative approaches to responding to behavioral health emergencies from the National Association of State Mental Health Directors uh, to inform our future state visioning process with evidence-based practice and recommendations. Hello, I'm Chris Celio, the um, Director of, of, of Clinical Programs at the Hume Center. Throughout all of our interviews and observations, many consistent ideas were shared by people from all different points of view and experience. So we got into our teams and figured out how to get to these change ideas by creating driver diagrams. To do this, we started from our aim statement and determined the primary and secondary drivers that could lead system change towards the ideas we envisioned. This led to a broad, impactful, and very exciting list of proposed changes and a map on how to get there. Hi, my name is Hilary Bowers, Homeless Outreach Coordinator with CORE, and I'm also a person with lived experience. So what did we do with all this information? We created a future state map. This map strives towards an ideal future. Our future map provides a vision for where we would like to head and acts as a guide toward making decisions about how we prioritize services so that we can best meet the needs of the people in our community. Our future map provides access to our services in a much more streamlined process and it increases the value of time to the person receiving services to now 85%. Hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Boyd. I work for Contra Costa Behavioral Health Services in the Office for Consumer Empowerment. So within our teams, we came up with some improvement ideas. Some of those ideas include improvements to our mobile crisis response team, a complete regional response system, more training for responding staff, whole family engagement, more available resources and resource distribution, and the possibility of a single phone number to call when in crisis. 
Hello, everybody. Miguel Garibay, EMS Supervisor for American Medical Response. Our team got together and voted on a list of improvement ideas. The top three ideas are highlighted on this slide. The first one being 24-7 mobile team response availability. The second one, develop a non-law enforcement team uh, able to respond to crises, including social workers, peers, nurses, et cetera. And the third one is to develop a single crisis response phone number. Hello, my name is Pre Campbell Sheen and I'm with the friends of Scott, Alexis and Ton Hall. The culmination of our work together has led to several important recommendations and next steps or rapid improvement events. A rapid improvement event is a week long event. It is similar to a value stream mapping with a team focused on testing some of the improvement ideas. The future rapid improvement events that will be tested are a single number to call for a behavioral health crisis a mobile crisis 24-7 response, a non-police response mobile crisis team composition, and alternate destinations for individuals in crisis. Hello, I'm Rachel White, a dispatcher with the Contra Costa Sheriff's Office. In summary, this documents and measures all the work we have done together so we know where to improve, also including our plans for the future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Roberto Vargas, Director of Safety and Performance Improvement at Contra Costa Regional Medical Center, Health Centers and Detention, and I was one of the workshop leaders for this value stream mapping event. I would like to say a big thank you to our sponsors, leadership advisory team, everyone who shared their great work at the observation sites we visited, and our on-call specialists. Thank you. I'm Erica Jensen. I'm also a workshop leader uh, of this team over the past two weeks, and I wanted to say uh, a special thank you to our sponsors and city partners, uh, the city of Pittsburgh, city of San Ramon, Lafayette, San Pablo, Concord, Walnut Creek, uh, as well as Contra Costa Health Services. I also wanted to say a big thank you to the team. Um, we usually do this uh, workshop in one week. We usually do it in person. Um, and we usually get the opportunity to see each other and go out. Um, the team was incredibly flexible with our transition to the uh, virtual world, um, as well as continuing to be patient, open, and curious. We had people on our team share their personal experiences as well as their professional experiences, um, which really made for a, just a rich experience over the past two weeks. I also want to uh, particularly thank our team leads um, who led our groups, uh, as well as my co-workshop leader, uh, Roberto Vargas. Um, and finally, uh, last but not least, our administrative team, Noelia Gutierrez and Emily Parmenter, who really kept us on track uh, with all the um, uh, documenting, all the work that we did, as well as the invitations, all the Zoom, all of the technology. So thank you so much. Hello everyone, I'm Bradley Lindblom. I'm a Lieutenant with the San Pablo Police Department. So at the beginning of this process, uh, I had no idea what a value stream map was uh, and beginning to get deeper into it. Uh, I really wanted to be able to provide the, uh, the great people and the professionals that were in this group uh, with a law enforcement experience. Um, many times people don't understand what law enforcement does. Um, but I really wanted to provide that insight that law enforcement cares about our community. We want to do what's best for each individual. And uh, many times our hands are tied based on laws and policies. But ultimately, at the end of the process, um, I hope that I was able to provide that. And I met some truly wonderful people. And I appreciate the leadership of this group, keeping it on, on task. I know it was very difficult. So... I just wanted to thank everybody involved and I appreciate the, uh, or in the, uh, I was honored to be part of this group. So thank everyone. I'm Gigi Crowder. I'm the executive director for the National Alliance of Mental Illness here in Contra Costa County, as well as a member of FOSET, friends of Alexis Scott and Ton Hall. And I'm more than excited to have, the, to have been selected to be a participant of this value Stream mapping process. I've participated in the past in rapid response projects, and I'm more than delighted that this county was allowing itself to peel back the layers and really come up with an opportunity to better respond to crisis. That's really important for family members, and I'm not familiar with many other counties allowing themselves to be so vulnerable. So I'm really appreciative of the 
county leadership and our willingness to move forward and improving outcomes for those who are impacted by mental illness. Thank you. Thank you all of you who did this important work and who helped us bring it to the community today. It's an impressive effort that will guide us moving forward. We'll hear now from Contra Costa Health Director, Anna Roth. Thank you, everyone. So Hubert Humphrey said, the moral test of government is how that government treats those who are in the dawn of life, those who are in the twilight of life, and those who are in the shadows of life. Taking the concept a little further, in a publication that appeared this summer, Dr. Don Berwick, who without question in my mind is considered one of the world's most accomplished leaders in healthcare quality improvement, described what he called the moral determinants of health. In this description, he called on each of us to step into a social compact with our community to address inequities, broken systems, and social change. In short, to engage in the work of moral determinants of health. In his discussion, he asked the reader to imagine, and I quote, for a moment it, that the moral law com commanded shared endeavor for securing the health of communities. He went on to say, imagine further that the healing professions, and I would just add all of us, together saw ourselves as bearers of that news and leaders of that change. So let me say that um, one more time. Imagine that the moral law within commanded shared endeavor for securing the health of communities and that we see ourselves as the bearers of that news and the leaders of that change. Well, thanks to this team, I don't have to imagine because I heard the news that change is coming and I see the leaders of change right here. This team embarked in shared endeavor to take on the task of ensuring the behavioral health crisis will be available to anyone, anywhere, anytime in Contra Costa County. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. Indeed, this is a worthy endeavor. We heard the news that services and workflows were examined that opportunities and ideas for improvement were identified and they were abundant. We saw those sticky notes. And perhaps the most powerful of all, we were witness to the magnificent work of a diverse coalition of improvers, people with a broad background of lived and professional experience that formed a powerful base for the work ahead. They identified four priorities. They came together and really told us what's important a single number to call for behavioral health crisis response, a 24 seven mobile crisis response, to have a non-police mobile crisis team component, identify alternative destinations for those experiencing behavioral health crisis. And they didn't stop there. They created plans for next steps for the rapid improvement events that will serve as milestones on the paths of we, as we move forward. And in the coming months, as we use lean process improvement, we will develop timelines to meet these milestones. We'll convene teams to conduct week-long improvement events, and we'll test and refine the many ideas that were generated over this last two weeks. In short, this is the first step. There's much ahead in the coming months. I want to personally thank each member of the team. Your dedication, showing up for every Zoom meeting, trekking out to sites across the region, generously sharing your skill and spirit made this work possible. I also wanna thank my fellow sponsors, a small but mighty collective of city managers who represented all 19 cities uh, in our county and all of the cities were really, really very generous in responding to our requests. I also want to thank our board of supervisors who have not only been longtime champions of behavioral health and behavioral health improvement, but they've also been longtime champions of improvement efforts like, like you're seeing today. I want to thank the community for your support and for your advocacy. I also want to thank our health services deputy director, Erica Jensen, who together along with the rest of the team leaders and the members on this team proved without a doubt that with commitment, dedication, respect, kindness, creativity, and a ton of technology, you can even do a value stream mapping event virtually. But most importantly, I wanna thank those with lived experience and their loved ones. Your experiences, your insights, 
your hopes light, are lighting the way forward for our community. Your courage and the courage of this team, all of the accomplishments and possibility that you've pre presented here today should serve as an inspiration to us all. And you're calling on us to do better. You've laid out a powerful vision that Contra Costa County, in Contra Costa County, we can live and work in a place where anyone, anywhere, at any time can get the behavioral health crisis services they need. Together, we will secure the health of our community. You are the bearers of that news and you are the leaders of that change. Thank you. We appreciate you spending your morning with us. Uh, this will not be your only opportunity to see this broadcast. It will show again on CCTV in the coming days uh, on Saturday, November 21st at noon and 7 p.m. and Sunday the 22nd at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. We'll also post this video on our website at cchealth.org where you can see it anytime you want. We look forward to sharing more with you as this process moves along and thank you again for joining us.